Hi, welcome to another episode. We are here today. Um, I, this person was recommended to us by someone I take a writing workshop with. And so really excited to introduce Nancy Davis coming to us this morning from Connecticut. Hi, Nancy. Good morning. Hi. Hi. Yeah, no, it's late for me, early for you guys. Or, or at Well, least- actually, I'm only oh, an yeah. hour behind you. I'm in the se- I'm in oh, yeah, you're central only time. Yeah. Early, Early for me. For I have the coffee, but I'm excited to see you. So this has been a long time coming. Yeah. So we'll just yeah. we'll, we'll dig in and ask you, you know, your origin story, your adoption, and why you're here with us. Okay. Well, um, I think I'll I'll start with I I was always wondering what my roots were for sure. I never felt quite a part of the the family that I grew up with who were wonderful people and a very large fun group of people, but it, I never felt like I was one of them and never felt comfortable expressing that either because it was, it was, I didn't want to embarrass anybody or make them feel bad or that kind of thing. But I just never, I was um, brought up by a Jewish family. Um, Lovely. I'm glad I have that background, but I never felt truly connected to it. So I was always curious what my background was and it was hard to find anything. Uh, They they told you early on you were adopted? uh, Relatively early on. I think it was just, they they used to read a book to me um, and it's called The Chosen Baby. I think, yes, that seems to be a common theme among baby scooping (laughs) or adoptees. (laughs) <laughs> and then they changed of course they crossed out the baby's name was Mary and they changed it to Nancy and there was a boy also and they changed it to my brother my adopted brother and um I just never like put it together it was just a great story I used to hear it all the time um and then all of a sudden probably when I was nine nine ten somewhere around there and you're getting curious about I don't know Getting, growing up and menstruating and pregnancy and all those things. And I said something to my mother. I said, oh, you must have looked really funny when you were pregnant because she's kind of, she was kind of a little short, round lady. And so she said, Nancy, I, <laughs> I was never pregnant. You, you, were, you and your brother are adopted. And I went, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like the light <laughs> went off in my head. It's like, it's so dumb. But after that, I think I always wanted to know more, didn't know how to do it. I, on and off over the years, I would try. I was adopted. I was born in um, Florida, but I lived in New York State. So I would try through their different channels. And I just keep saying, no, it's it's New York's problem. No, it's Florida. We can't, you know, we can't do what, any of this. So I would just how, give up. And- how did your New York parents come to adopt you in Florida? Well, that's, that's, we're actually still just learning that. Um, I didn't have any success with any of that because they kept saying records are closed, records are closed, or the, it took place in New York, it took place in Florida, and nobody could quite figure it all out. When I did finally go and not for anything, not expecting to find a family, I went on Ancestry. And uh, the test came back in, in three weeks and it's, uh, I thought I was just going to get some, you know, maybe ethnic bra- background or something. Just curious. And it, the first thing comes up, you have a very close relative. <laughs> and it's either a grandparent or a sibling. Mm-hmm. And at my age, I knew it wasn't a grandparent because they'd be 100 years old or more. And so I said, I'd read it probably 10 times before it sunk in. And I said, oh. I have a sibling, could be a half sibling. That was more where I was leaning. And then it took a lot of detective work to, because that person was no longer active on Ancestry. Mm -hmm. So you can't connect, you know, you can write to them through Ancestry, but they don't give you their real emails or, you know, contact information. So I looked up, he had a family tree and I looked up the two parents and I got, the obituaries, uh, well, actually the one main one was for the mother and the mother uh, said, or she had five children and one of them was named Dr. Michael Bryan. And 
the username of the guy on Ancestry was Doc Bryan. So I said, this has got to be the right person. Mm -hmm. Couldn't find him for a while. I, you know, took some phone calling, no longer at this address, no longer at this business, you know, all this sort of stuff. And finally did find him. My husband called his office yeah. and, <laughs> and, and he didn't take the call initially. The second time my husband said, I'm not selling anything. <laughs> you might be interested because this is about ancestry. So he gave his secretary the, uh, his email address and my husband brought it home to me that night. I wrote to him, it was probably eight, nine o'clock at night. And I just said, if you're interested, we are supposedly siblings, blah, blah, blah. And he wrote back immediately. And we just kept back and forth all night to like two o'clock in the morning, exchanging pictures, all kinds of things, putting pieces of the puzzle together. But as I said, that's five years, six years ago, we're still figuring out certain things about how I was actually adopted in Florida. Now, do, who do you people. share? Which parent do you share? We both. Both? They're, oh, they, so yes. you're a full sibling. I not, not I have five siblings. <laughs> no, but he's but he's full, like full. both parents. All full. I was the first. Wow. And I was the oops baby, apparently. At, and, and you were the first. Yes. And then they had us, they were living in Florida. I don't, I, we still don't understand the circumstances of why and how they did this because they did get married. They moved out of their state. They were living in North Carolina and they moved to Florida while I was born. I was adopted. Then they had another baby in Florida and they moved back to North Carolina and had the rest of the kids. So did they keep that second baby after you? Oh yeah. Yeah. All, all four yeah. grew up with them. Yeah. All they're five. They were five that grew up together. I had uh, two sisters and three brothers. They all grew up together in North Carolina and I was up here <laughs> doing it an entirely different life. But and, and uh just one quick question before I don't yeah. mean to keep interrupting. No. Did were they told about you? Yeah. No. No, no I didn't. Okay. No. Okay. And then of course, but once you something is exposed or discovered, they they started saying, hmm, you know, Aunt So and so said something <laughs> funny about she had a little too much to drink one night and she said something about, oh, your mom and dad, you know, something crazy, you know, they had to get married or something, you know, something like that. But they didn't. They still couldn't and still can't um, kind of digest that their parents, as they, they knew them and as and all their friends and family knew them, could not picture them giving up a child, especially once they got married and they probably, she was probably like four months or so pregnant when they got married and they don't know why I would have Were been- Were they young? No, they were not young. I think my, they were actually on the older end for that generation for having babies. Uh, they were probably, dad was probably close to 30 and mm. my mom was, I think like 28, somewhere in there. And there's no one, you know, older in your family to ask? No, there's nobody left that would know anything about this. So, that is interesting. Yeah. And when they, uh, I had, the reason my brother had gone on Ancestry in the first place was right after our mother died, he decided to do a family tree and he knew there was some cousins way out somewhere in, in, in Morocco or something. And he was trying to put this all together. And then he kind of gave up on it. He did, he did it for a while and then he, he stopped, but it was, it was her death. So it was probably about 14 months after she died that mm -hmm. I, was, I found them. So I never got to meet her and father died a long time ago so um, there was no chance there but it was it was too bad but they they said it probably would have killed her to, to see me or have me discovered but what? there's still some doubt that she actually that it was an actual um you know relinquishing of a baby they really think that there was some stuff going on <laughs> yeah in, in uh, Florida, it was, it was, like that maybe there that yeah. you were part of a like maybe stolen or something or well the only thing the, I I've done the best research I could find I mean my mother always my adoptive mother always told me oh the information about your 
birth is all in the safe deposit box and you can get it whenever you want. So I, I never did it until they both passed away and I went and there was nothing there, <laughs> no information at all. But she had said to me something that when I was adopted, they asked her, it was a private adoption, it was not an agency. And they had asked her to testify at a trial that involved the lawyer that facilitated this whole thing. Hmm. And she refused because she was terrified that something would come up that they would take me away from her. So I'm sure she destroyed all the stuff at that point and didn't tell me that. But it does sound, it wasn't on the up, yeah, you know, um, yeah. a little like, bit. There's some something going on there. A little. There's definitely something going on, and there was it was a period of time where this was very prominent. Um, the, in other parts of the country, they they would they were literally sealing babies and from yes. unwed mothers. Well, and in and in Florida, we know somebody <laughs> yes. who was he's a little bit younger, but he was a stolen baby in Florida. Ah. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, so there's, we're still investigating it, but I did, I was able to Google. Um, I just said, you know, I don't even remember how I phrased it, but I, I did get the information about an attorney that was convicted. Um, and it was majority of them were Jewish families in New York adopting babies, Christian babies from Florida. This is a similar the same story. Ah, okay. So it, it does seem to be whether they, the, our mother once said to one of our, my sisters, when she was trying to get pregnant, she said, oh, I had a miscarriage once. So maybe she was told that she miscarried. Oh. So that's the only thing we're thinking. Because wow. it just doesn't, they went and had, you know, five kids, my, there's six of us. Yeah. And there's only. 10 years between us all that. I mean, they, and he was a deacon in the church and, and they were very active in the church and all kinds of stuff. They just couldn't see them ever giving up a child. No, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. And even in her later years, when, you know, she was in her nineties, when she died, she had some memory problems. I wouldn't say she wasn't like full on dementia or, or Alzheimer's, but she, definitely had memory issues, but you'd think that something would have come up about giving up yeah. a child or something in your, you know, when you're not hundred percent, you know, in control of your faculties. But anyway, but nothing ever came up directly. So maybe she just lived with the idea that it was a miscarriage. Yeah, something went sad. wrong in delivery. Often yeah. the men weren't, were not in the room <laughs> during that. Oh, so, right. and yeah that could be anything goes down. I mean, yeah, that's bizarre. There, it, it, it is very bizarre. So I did, I have the attorney's name. I, I looked, he did get convicted. Someone else, a couple of people worked with him and it was, there was a shortage of Jewish babies, <sighs> there, which is crazy. I mean, it sounds weird, but my brother, my adopted brother was, he was adopted through Louise Wise services, sure. which was, strictly Jewish babies at that period of time. And my parents had been on the waiting list for seven years and they just were getting frustrated. And then someone called them and said, there's this baby available. <laughs> Do you want it? You was know? this, um, was your brother older than you? He is. He has since passed away, but yes, he was seven years older than I am. So, so and were they told that you were a Jewish baby? No. No. no, they were, but I don't think they were told much of anything other than there's uh, a baby. It, it's a crazy, yeah, it's a little bit cuckoo. My mother told me that we, they were told to go, fly to Florida, and for whatever reason, my mother and her mother went. My father did not go, and <laughs> they went to an attorney's office, and they had me, baby, sitting on the desk, wrapped in blankets. God. And my grandmother apparently went over because she was she was the tough one in the family and she opened the blankets made sure they were all the toes and everything was put together and she said let's go wrap her up and go <laughs> you know it was, it was so it, it does sound a lot more sketchy yes. than it was made down initially so I mean it is sketchy for sure 
<laughs> I mean, did, just, did, just the supply of babies like that word there's a yeah you know yeah. just oh god the domestic supply mm. of infants um mm. did yeah. did your so did your siblings grow up with a in a loving good home Very and wonderful that must have yeah felt really feel? strange to you like I mean that's really a kind of alternate universe yeah. scenario, isn't it? To see, wow, the, it, it, you know, many times you hear these stories of relinquishment in which think mm-hmm. troubled birth families and mm-hmm. all this stuff. It doesn't sound like that was the case at all in your, in your. No, no, there's, I mean, I was sure when I first discovered I had a sibling that it was going to be one of those, you know, one Mm -hmm. parent or the other and, you know, Mm -hmm. an affair or whatever, but it was a really solid, loving family. And that's why no one to this day really believes that they gave up the child. And have they all welcomed you in all of the siblings? Yes. Amazingly, amazingly. Yeah. No, (laughs) actually it was funny. I, some, I got on a thread. They were, they, the one brother found out first. And then he was going to tell everyone what we did a second test on 23 and me mm-hmm. um, for two reasons, kind of confirmed the first one, but also at the time ancestry couldn't tell if we were full or half siblings. So, but 23 and me could determine that they had the mm-hmm. technology to do it. So we did that test, which took a little longer. So it delayed him telling them for a couple of months. And so I, somehow I, by mistake, got on the thread when he's talking to them about this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> one of my sisters says, she goes, this is not a hallmark moment. <laughs> I thought, oh God, she's going to be the witchy sister. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Turns out she's like my best friend now. It's, it's very funny. But yeah, she was just saying like, this somehow doesn't fit with our family. <laughs> you know, it's like, but there was, they've all been really wonderful. We get together quite a bit. Um, they all, they all live in North Carolina and I'm up here, but we get together all of us once a year for at least for a, um, we rent a house somewhere and just mm-hmm. vacation together for a week. And, um, in between we've seen each other in, in different circumstances. And my, one of my sisters teaches Pilates and since COVID she started t- doing it on zoom. So I see her like three times a week and we've become really good friends and our husbands have become like two peas in a pot or just, it's just really funny. So, and we Did all you, look like, <laughs> you all look like what, what was your ethnic, ethnic background? Yeah. Curious. Okay. Um, so we're all uh, very Irish, <laughs> um, which is totally what I look like, you know, physically, yeah. if that's, if that's, if there is such a thing, um, yeah, I was, you know, very comfortable with that history, much more so than I was with my Jewish upbringing, because I didn't look like my cousins. I didn't, they were, and there was just something different. I did, I did, I don't know how a religion can be, mm-hmm. affect you, you know, in your DNA, but it's sort of, it's, it, it was a very different, but I'm so glad that I've had now both exposures. So were you bat mitzvah? no. <laughs> no, they, they, the family that I grew up with, fortunate was they were pretty relaxed. They, they were not; they were very reformed Jews, and girls didn't get as have bat mitzvahs as much as boys had their bar mitzvahs. Um, more fruit in our age group for some reason, and where we lived, a girl it was very rare for girls to do that. Now it's much more common. But what? Um, how was your adopted family with all of this information? Who knew about it? Anybody? Cousins or both nope. your parents had passed? Both parents had passed. Um, mm-hmm. And there was, I think, which it, another funny fact is that our mother was a twin. And I always thought, you know, that's always interesting. That's a nice little, maybe somewhere along the line, someone in my family can have a, a twins too. Mm-hmm. But I, they're all taller than I am. We all look alike, but I, I look like the runt of the litter. <laughs> I used to say that's why they gave me away. I was the runt of the litter. <laughs> but, but the, it turns out that my mother's twin was tiny. Even they were not the identical twins. And she was very tall. And she, her, her, her twin sister was teeny tiny. So I'm more like her. 
So I, at least I, I knew I had a connection there. I thought, is, but uh, we do, we're all pretty much the same coloring. We're, we all play golf. <laughs> we're, I don't know. We're just weird <laughs> that we know so much about each other. We're very yeah. comfortable with each other. It's, um, That's how it works. It's just kind of an instant thing. You miss the history with, you know, you don't grow up together. So you don't have the little stories and the history, right. but, but it's so comfortable. Yeah. Very comfortable. And, and I do, you know, once in a while, you know, cause we're always texting each other and they'll talk about somebody from their past and they'll say, hold on guys. I don't know that person, you know, give me a little history, you know, and they're, they're good about it. You know, and they tell me all the little interesting stories of the past. So did you, um, were you close to your adoptive brother growing yeah, up? I was wondering. My adoptive brother was, I, there were seven years between us. So there, I mean, there was a big gap and, and we were, he, we, we weren't really friendly until he got to college. And I was then, you know, like I, high school, he's at the end of college. And all of a sudden his, his friends discovered me and they said, oh, your sister's cute. You know, kind mm-hmm. of thing. Um, and then, and he was started getting very protective of me all of a sudden, um, that kind of thing. And then unfortunately he, um, and he got engaged and I was very close with her, but then he passed away in, in a car accident. So oh. we never got to really get beyond that. So you and never he, really he, were yeah. able to talk about your adoption or feelings about never. being adopted. That's what or, I wondered. Yeah. Never, never. And I don't, yeah, I don't know. I had no clue what his feelings were. I, I know he was, my mother used to say he was a little difficult, <laughs> um, a tough guy, but. I mean, isn't that, isn't that kind of in all our interviews with adoptees, you know, in books we've read, it seems like there's uh, the compliant adoptee or there's the mm-hmm. reactive adoptee. Yeah. Ah, often. Okay. Well, I, he could, he could be in that reactive group there and he, I, but he, I, I didn't, I don't think I paid attention to, to it until it was kind of too late to discuss it with him. Um, but I just knew forever. And I think even now, even now that I have some connection, you know, with my family and learning about the past and all that, I still feel a little bit at sea. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, you know, like, who do I really belong to? And what did I miss? You know, that kind of yeah. thing. We got an email from from an adoptee who's in Ireland and um, he was part of the era in which the birth mothers went off to, you know, the nuns and, and yes. it was a twin and the babe, they, the twin died and they just buried it in a shoe box. Um, but he said something, he goes, even though I have a beautiful wife and a family, I still feel like I'm on the outside looking in. Yeah. Which mm-hmm. I thought really described because I, I, I too feel like that. It feels mm-hmm. like no matter the amount of work I can do or self-awareness or realizations, it still feels like that. It does. You said uh, out to sea and I just mm-hmm. finished a poem last night on the, on the plane I was flying called adrift. And it's sort ah. of that, sort of that, that's how Sarah and I used to bond is talking about kind of that. You're not all the way in. I don't know. It's a, yeah. it's just a very thing with adoptees, you know? And how did you, do you feel like through this work, like have things come up for you? Like, Oh, you know, cause we're going through so much of that, the feelings of why I might've done this or had relationships like this or. Yes. I mean, every day there's something else that's, that's new to me, but it, it, not never yet feeling Mm -hmm. done (laughs) for sure. You know, just, I kind of have that still at sea feeling, but not nearly as much. So Mm -hmm. that's neat. Your relationship might mellow it a bit too, doesn't it? (laughs) Like you just, yeah. Well, but, that's um, it. and do you have children? Yeah, I do. I have two boys and they both have families. Um, and they were, they were very excited about it. They haven't met everybody yet. It's just with six siblings, it's hard to get everybody mm-hmm. together, but they've met a few of them and, and they really like them all. And I've met some of their kids, um, actually, and one of them I'm, I've gotten very close to, and she's just a, a really neat girl. And I don't know, we've connected, but yeah, no, we're every, everybody's good and excited about it. I think if we lived closer, it would have worked a little faster mm-hmm. and a little more solid, I guess, but um, 
we're working on it still. <laughs> it's very healing that I love that they just embraced you and you're part of it. I mean, yeah. you're the, you're the older sister. You're, you're so I know, they, 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 which freaks me out completely. You know, I was like, <laughs> what do you mean? I'm the big sister. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm I live my life as the youngest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, it's, uh, and I look like the youngest though. That's what's funny. I, I if, if I'll, if, I'll grab a picture and show you at the end that it's uh, all of us, but don't ask why, but I do look like the youngest, mm-hmm. even though I'm the oldest, but it's really not as big a span. That's what I said. I couldn't believe they had so many kids in 10 years. It was, it was yeah, very... it does. It does not make sense that you wouldn't be, you know, wanted and well, and it kept... sounds like if mm-hmm. you're saying that the attorney got convicted yeah. and um, yeah. it sounds like yeah. a little, I mean, it was, yeah, I think <laughs> he got ring. Yeah. yeah, it does. And, and I mean, they don't say a whole lot about it, but it is, it was a couple of, articles in the New York times, I believe it was that explained some of it, but it, yeah, it doesn't sound kosher at all. You know? What, what year did they get convicted? Um, I'm, I think I was, I was adopted in 1949 and I believe it was 51. Hmm. It was 50 or 51. It was very soon after. That's why I said they'd come. I, I was probably an infant and they'd come to my mother and said, would you testify against this guy? And she said, absolutely not. You know, so someone did, but I don't know. And, now, did and you it, stay close to your adoptive parents your oh, yeah. whole life? Or, oh, yeah, definitely. Did you feel like you bonded? Yeah, we did. I just felt like we were different people. That's the, the only, we didn't, I don't know. They were, um, I don't know. I think my my dad was, just a sweet guy and very, um, I don't know, he didn't interact a lot with everybody. He was just a nice guy. And my mom was the, sort of the more involved in our lives and what we should be doing or not doing. But she was also very indulgent. And I think because they didn't have children till so much later and whatever. So I think that I suffered certain things because of that. I was, I was a bit bratty and spoiled and um, I don't know, just entitled when I shouldn't have been. <laughs> um, and I think, I, I think that there's a piece of me that now that I know my other family and the circumstances that they grew up in, that I probably would have been a stronger person had I been in that atmosphere mm-hmm. instead of being an indulged, because it was almost like a, a single child with it. It was such a, you know, yeah. distance between me and my brother. So we, I was indulged. They were older. They were, you know, they were almost 40 when they had, they adopted me. So it was sort of a whole different kind of approach. But my siblings grew up, you know, there was five of them in a little tiny house with one bathroom, you know, kind of yeah. thing. And, and they're all very successful and they're, they're happy people. And, you know, I'm sure everybody has their issues, but it, I just, I, I do think I would have been a, a I don't know, a stronger, probably more giving person if I'd grown up with them. But who yeah, knows? It's such different scenarios, isn't it? It's just, yeah. it's fascinating. No. Yeah. What it makes what? me sad you didn't have that, actually? Hmm? I didn't. See. It makes I me didn't. sad that you didn't have that. That yeah, connection. It makes me sad. And yet, as I said, I, I do have, I did have a wonderful family and mm-hmm. they were loving and wonderful. And I, and I'm, I actually love the fact that I have yeah. that, the Jewish upbringing as well, because I, I understand it very well. I'm very comfortable with it. I, you know, get it, but mm-hmm. I, I knew I was never part of it somehow. What spurred your search? Well, actually, I, I mean, it, as I said, I'd been interested on and off, but just kept getting, you know, rebuffed and said kind of gave up but then when ancestry came out and a friend of mine did her hers because she she's she, her parents always told her she had native american blood in her <laughs> family such a so, common thing to be told <laughs> I, we know a few people same. with that <laughs> i just thought it was it was kind of funny but she said i'm going to do my dna and you know see what she was so she did it and she got her results just before. And I said, okay, I'll do it too. But she was like a week ahead of me. And none of the things were true <laughs> that her parents had told her. She, they told her she was French and that she was, had uh, 
Native American blood and all that. And she has, she has more Jewish in her. <laughs> I don't have any. <laughs> I have zero, zero, zero. <laughs> Jewish background. But she has, she had more. She had, I don't, I don't know, she had German. She had all kinds of things and nothing that she was ever told. So we thought that was pretty funny. And then when I got my results, it was sort of like, I can one up you on this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got even better stuff. So. Uh, ancestry has just blown up a lot of uh a lot of lives right good and oh, crazy you know, it's no, crazy it, for me as every, well every time I tell this story to someone they say oh someone else I know did the same mm-hmm. thing and, mm-hmm. and many times unfortunately it doesn't work out quite as well as yeah. my story worked out it's it's really been fabulous but people get don't want to have anything to do with that past or they yeah. don't want and, you know, like, who are you? We don't need you, you know, in our lives, you know, kind of thing. So, so fortunately, we were lucky that way. But, you know, the ancestry keeps evolving, too. I keep getting yes. all these updates of, you know, no, you're not really this, you're this. They're <laughs> you know, really, this yeah. So it's, I, I think they, they update every year or two years or something. Yes. Yeah. Um, no. So that no, and they can tell update. many more things than they used to, too. And mm-hmm. And health issues and all mm-hmm. kinds. Of oh, does Ancestry do the health? I yes. guess they do. I haven't signed up for that. A new up- of- I think it's a new update. I think it is. Yeah. Uh, 23 and me did it first, I think. Right. Uh, they had much more extensive technology from the beginning. But um, yeah, no, it, it, it's kind of interesting. Some of it, I say, really? I'm not sure that's really true. But it's, <laughs> but it, it's really an ongoing I'm just trying to think now. I think it was 2015, November of 2015, that I connected with my brother. Didn't get together with the family for about four months after that. But since then, you know, we still keep learning stuff. One sister-in-law, which is interesting, that it's the sister-in-law, not the siblings, is she's like digging away. And all the information I just told you about that I found those articles in the New York Times and whatever, she's following up on all that. So good. Like, she's the go investigator. Yeah. <laughs> she, good. She, she, of course, she knew the parents and, and she knew them from a different perspective, not being their child. And she just could not believe that they would give up a child. So I no, love I that. Will you, will you keep us uh, posted on what she finds out i find this oh, absolutely fascinating i do too it's good to have a follow-up on that yeah yeah no I, and I, we'd love to get a picture of you with your siblings because oh. we're going to put some on our website but just to see it okay yeah no i, I have one right over my shoulder there i'll get you <laughs> <laughs> i'll send it to you but it's uh yeah it's been fun it's been it I have this to is say. a this is a a really happy story a happy uh, reunion story I love hearing this me too yeah. it's a nice way to start the day yeah <laughs> oh, and yes. interesting I feel like following up too I'm like I'm gonna look into this this I is know <laughs> the years and yeah. sounds like it's a different probably, you know, a so different easy. scammy lawyer because our friend was later yeah. he was like late sixties so I, and a very similar scenario but very similar. Huh, yeah. I mean, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if it still goes on. I mean, oh, I think so. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are not as many babies available in general, I think, than they used to be just because it was, you know, people just have babies and you don't have to be married to have a baby. And, you know, it, it's, and much- there isn't the societal pressure that you can't yeah. be a single mom or you don't right. have right. parents saying you can't keep this baby. And, um, mm-hmm. right. No, so, it's a, so it's, they're not, you know, and there are people who are desperate to have them and they'll do pretty much anything to right. get one. So, yes. Mm-hmm. So. Coercive techniques for sure. If not yeah. outright stealing. So yeah, no, which is scary, but it is. Yeah. And, and I, I, I kind of, there, part of me hopes that wasn't the case for them, that this was a yeah. decision that they made and that this wasn't something that traumatized them and all that, but I don't know. They just, it doesn't quite fit. So I think there could have been something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sounds yeah. like it. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Nancy, for coming on and telling us yeah. your story and sharing with us. Really fascinating. It's been great. Sure. It's lovely. <laughs> it's it's I, lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you guys too. And I will definitely send a picture of the whole crew and fill you in on whatever else you need. Okay. That sounds great. Thank you. Thank okay. you.
Thanks. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.